it. I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for coming. This is How to Make Screencasts and Explainers People Love. And as I'm, I'm not kidding when I was saying that the people who want to know more about this, you are my people because that's kind of always how I've been with video. I am an audio guy. I do podcasts, I do voiceover work, but I've always kind of had this interest in video. I do video some for work and I'm getting more into this and this whole idea of explainers kind of came to me because I would do a lot of voiceover work and explainer video scripts come in all of the time and I see some really, really good ones and I see some that aren't so good. So I see these scripts and I'm like, I really kind of want to understand how this process works. I want to know how to get better at this so when my clients are bringing me stuff, I can say, hey, have you considered? You don't typically do that, but the more value that I could add, I thought this would be a good way to learn more about it. So I started studying how explainer videos work. And when I got into it, I was really surprised at how straightforward it is. There's a lot of mystery, it seems, like how do they make it do all of that stuff? It's so cool. But it's really, there's a formula for it, and it's really, once you know the formula, this gets pretty easy. So today, that's what I want to focus on. I want to kind of get a lay of the land to kind of talk about what video is and why video itself is such a, an engaging form of content. I want to kind of lay out that framework, that structure for how an explainer video works, how you do the whole setup, and then at the end, kind of give you some resources, some things to consider if you want to do this yourself or maybe even hire it out. Does that sound good? All right, great. Then let's get started. I always like to start with context, and that's been a big theme for me this year, context. Simon Sinek, start with why. Why? You know, why do we want to talk about videos? Why is video so engaging? I saw this statistic, and I thought this was pretty amazing. The state of video and the internet. It was an article in Forbes. I think it was last year or the year before. By 2021, this is according to Cisco, 80% of the internet traffic will be video. I saw that, and I was like, no way. There are not that many people on YouTube watching cat videos. No, no way. <laughs> and I went, oh, Facebook, maybe, no. Um, but I started thinking about all the social media applications, and then it really dawned on me, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, all of the streaming services that are coming online. That's feeding a lot of that, but <clears throat> that's very telling because what that's saying is that video is a very engaging form of content. It is very easy to get sucked into video because it, it speaks to your brain much more than just hearing something or just reading something. It engages you in, in two ways. Uh, the other thing about video though, the problem with it is, it's really hard to get people's attention. If you don't get their attention in the first five to ten seconds, they're gone. Scrolling past, next, show me something that delights me. So that's the, that's the trick with video. And so what I, wanted, I want to kind of lay that out for you that's saying when you're going to be doing video content, the one thing you have to understand is you've got to hook them fast. All right. So let's find out a little bit more about how video works so you can learn how to hook them fast. And it has to do with how the brain works. So let's find out. I'm going to try to get Here's this up you. as loud as I can. You have the greatest product since sliced bread, but you also have a problem. Not many people know what your product is or why they'd be interested in it. How do you solve that? Explainer videos. Now, we all know the value of explaining something, but why are videos so popular for doing that? Well, there are many reasons video is great for explaining things, but one of the best is voiceover. See, research has found that presentations with words and images are 50% more effective when the words are communicated verbally rather than visually. What explains this? The dual channel hypothesis, which says that the brain receives information through two channels, our eyes and our ears. Why is this important? Well, each channel has a limited capacity for comprehension, meaning too much information coming into one channel can cause an overload, interfering with comprehension. But what if some of that information was directed instead to the other, unused channel? You no longer have information overload, meaning better comprehension of your product. Now you're thinking, that's really cool, but what does it have to do with explainer videos? Well, the thing with people these days is that they get bored quickly, which is a real bummer because there are a lot of amazing things you want to explain to them about your product. So, the more information you can communicate to them in a short amount of time, the better. And this is where voiceover comes in. Instead of someone's eyes having to juggle both pictures and words in visual form, they focus on the pictures with their visual channel and the words through their auditory channel, which means people will quickly understand your product before, yeah, that happens. Okay, 
that was used by permission. I did ask column five if I could show that and they agreed and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Does that make sense to you? Why that's so engaging is this dual, something called the dual channel hypothesis. And there's really three components of that dual channel hypothesis. The first thing is, if you, I don't know if you caught that, is that we tend to take information in both from our ears and our eyes, at least when we're talking about video. The more senses you can incorporate into a message, the more experiential it is for your, your listener or your audience, the more they're going to remember that. The problem that you have when you're appealing to just one channel, whether it's visual or auditory, is that channel can become overwhelmed. It's very easy to shove too much information in that pipe. And they're like, ah, I can't take it. That's why when you're bringing it in, in multiple, from multiple sources, it's retained better. And we'll talk a little bit more that, about that in just a moment. And finally, the reason that this works is the way the brain kind of organizes and creates schemas or meanings and uh, information is it takes all of those different sensory inputs and very quickly says this belongs with this, this belongs with this, and all of those neurons start firing together and the more senses you can engage in any kind of experience, the more your mind holds on to it. So this dual channel hypothesis kind of explains why we love video so much. It's because it's so much more engaging. Our brain remembers it better and it holds on to it more. So when you think about creating content, you always want to think, is there a way that I can bring video into this? Because it will help people remember more. Video and audio together are very, very powerful. Any questions on that before I move on? On dual channel hypothesis? It's kind of geeky, but it's cool. No? Okay. So let me give you a little more reason for the marketers out here. Why would we consider wanting to use video in our content mix? I thought this was actually kind of amazing. 90% of people say that they've used video to help make them make a purchasing decision. I have. I have. I would much rather see a video than just read something. I want to read it, but I also want to see the video. Very, very helpful. Including video on your landing page increases conversions by up to 80%. Now this may or may not be true because I've seen statistics that say it can be anywhere from 20 to 140% or higher. I think it's going to depend on the use case. But what I want you to know about that is including video on your landing page works a lot better than not including video on your landing page. We really don't care about executives, but the important thing to remember here is that if given a choice between just written content and a video, people are going to skew more towards wanting to watch video. But if you have both written content and video, you get them both. So always remember that video is going to be that thing that gives people an option to engage with you at a little deeper of a level. And finally, 80% of people remember seeing a video that they've watched in the last 30 days. It's kind of a non-stat stat, but if you think about it, you remember the commercials. I remember the commercials I see and maybe even the TV programs I see far better than the things I've read in the last 30 days. So video is much more engaging. So would we all agree that video, yeah, it's, it's probably a good idea to at least be thinking about it. We might want to consider doing some video with our web, WordPress site. Yes, yes, okay. Is lunch kicking in? Am I losing everyone? <laughs> okay, so yes, we all agree. Video works. But we're here to talk about explainer videos. Does anybody have a good definition of what an explainer video is? Anyone want to take a guess before we get going? Oh, okay. We'll take one in the back. Uh, a video that explains how a product or a service works. I like it. That actually it works pretty good. It's a self-descriptive title. Yeah, and it does so in a very engaging way that makes it very understandable for people. That's a perfect definition. But there's not just, it's not just explainer videos, right? There's not just one kind. There's all kinds of explainer videos. And we're going to talk about the different kinds first because I want you to see that the explainer video format that you choose is going to depend on what you want to achieve. So let's take a little bit of time to watch another video, another explainer video on explainer videos. I get it, it's meta. So we can get, just see what kind of landscape we're working with here. Did you know that using video in your landing pages can increase conversion rates by as much as 80%? Videos keep customers on your page longer, giving your marketing message more time to sink in. Thing is, not all videos are created equal. Let me put it this way. 
A marketing video is like the type of clothes you wear. You can't wear the same outfit to go to a rock concert, a job interview, and your cousin's wedding, right? Likewise, animated explainer videos come in all sorts of styles, each tailored to different audiences. Let's take a look at some of the most popular. A screencast video is a simple, low-budget type of video that showcases how your product or service works. They're more about education than branding, but these work well for prospects who like to try before they buy. Cartoon-style videos are all about storytelling. Your company is the hero who saves the day by solving your customer's problem. They're usually pretty funny and are great for humanizing your brand and building trust. The characters represent your various brand personas. So it's important to know the gender, age, and interests of your target market. If you're targeting end users, small businesses, or startups, cartoon-style videos are a great choice. Whiteboard animation is a super engaging technique because the content is created in front of the viewer's eyes. These videos are great for explaining complex information in a straightforward way and ideal if you're marketing IT solutions or computer software. Motion graphics offer an elegant and engaging style for businesses with a more serious profile like financial institutions. You can even add some 3D animation to make the video more impressive. Now you have a better idea of what kind of video could work for your landing page to convert like crazy. As for what to wear to your next pitch, sorry, we can't help you there. Used by permission by Yang Memory Videos. Um, this makes sense. 2D, 3D animation, whiteboards, explain, or, uh, screencasts, motion graphics, four main kinds. There's a lot of different kinds of explainer videos. Don't think you're ever limited to one format because all of these formats have evolved over the last five to ten years. There's going to be something new something somebody's doing. But the principles of the explainer video remain the same regardless of which format you're using. So let's figure out how we're going to get started creating these explainer videos. Like I said, context is really important to me. It's something that I've really started to see the value of in the last year. And when we go to make an explainer video, context is important. We have to know what we're trying to do. What's the outcome we're looking for before we get going? If you can't answer the question, what am I doing? What is the outcome I want? And what problem am I trying to solve for my customer? You're going to get lost as you go through this. If you know where you want to end up, it's much easier to create the roadmap to get there. So before you ever start, before you get the animation software, before you do anything else, start figuring out what the outcome you want is. Spend some time doing that. If you think, I promise it will pay you back because that will be the through line that carries through on your whole project. And a quick aside, so what problem are you trying to solve? Make sure the problem you're trying to solve is a problem your customer wants solved. I was in a, a session yesterday on freelance and um, Matt Kasner was talking about how he had done a PowerPoint presentation, fixed a PowerPoint presentation for uh, an executive who wrote this incredible testimonial for him. Said how great he was and how knowledgeable he was and, how, and, and he told me you know, there really wasn't a whole lot to it. The problem was this lady had hired a few different companies to fix her problem. None of them listened to her. All she wanted done was something very simple that he went in and fixed that anyone with any knowledge of PowerPoint could do. And she loved it. That was absolutely what she wanted. But the problem was the other companies were trying to solve a problem she didn't want solved. And she was mad at them. So you may know the right thing to do, but it isn't necessarily what the customer wants you to do. Sometimes you have to solve the problem that they want solved before you can educate them on the problem they need to solve. So make sure that when you're, before you start on an explainer video, you're solving the problem that the customer wants solved. Again, before we break out the animation software, we need to know who our audience is. Demographics, psychographics, and avatars. We all are familiar with demographics, right? It's what the government loves to collect information on demographics. Who people are, how much they make, where they live, where they went to school, all of that objective data that's collected about your life, demographics, objective. What about psychographics? That's a kind of a different term you may or may not have heard of. Does anyone know what psychographics are? Go ahead, take a 
What's your? Well, when I was a mayor, we hired a company when we were trying to develop some land mm -hmm. of what kind of um, retail we would want that would fit in our area. And so we looked at psychographics for the area. Right. And, and, it, and it looks at, will they buy from a hardware store? What are they, you know, what are they looking, what are my neighbors looking at? What are their interests? Buy? Yeah. yeah, what are their concerns, their interests, what are, the, what, are they, uh, what are their problems, what are the things that they deal with, the psychographics, how, how, how people think, how they live, yeah. It goes much deeper than just knowing that someone lives in a certain neighborhood and makes $75,000 in household income and has a college education or not. This answers the question of what kind of beer do they like to drink on Friday night? And are they going to go to a bar to drink that or are they going to go to the, the local convenience store and buy it? Right, so psychographics goes a little deeper. Now, if we really want to personalize this, we use something called avatars. I need my marketing people. Avatars, anyone want to take a stab at it? What an avatar is? Not the movie by James Cameron. It's like a stand-in. It's like a character that stands in for particular customers. Exactly. Exactly. It is a personification of your ideal customer. It's a fictionalized version of who your product is perfect for. All right, and you're. In, in my case, my, my uh, avatar is Bill, and Bill has a college degree. He has an undergrad, but not a master's, and he's been married for 13 years. He has two kids, and his wife is, is Janie, and Janie does not like Bill hanging out with his best friend. And the more you develop this backstory about your avatar, the more, and this avatar should reflect your customer, the more you understand the demographics and psychographics and build your avatar around those, the more you can create, and this is where it gets cool, you can create the characters for your cartoon explainer videos. Because the characters in your cartoon explainer videos are your avatars. They're who the story is about. Because when your customers come to see that, this, they're going, oh my gosh, this is me. How does this company know this is exactly what I'm dealing with? That's why knowing your audience before you do an explainer video is critical to getting it right. And the avatar becomes the main character that you rescue in your explainer video. So that's the, the basics of now, I think we're ready to start talking about explainer videos, all that to get here. The structure of an ex explainer video is actually very easy. There's really only four things that you really in general have to keep, your, keep an eye on when you do an explainer video. The first is your storyboard and script. The next is your voiceover. After that, your music bed, very important. And finally, the animation. If you can pay attention to those four things, if you can make sure that you address those four things, you have the structure for an explainer video. But just because you have the structure of a building, right, if you've ever watched a skyscraper go up, I wanted to find like this, see how the, all the framework is, is on that picture in the background. That doesn't tell you what the final room is going to look like, but it does mean that whatever you build has a solid base around it so you can kind of move the pieces around inside of that. You're going to have to have a storyboard, a voiceover, music, and, and uh, animation for your explainer. How you do that? Well, we'll find out. Let's start with the script, the script and storyboard. We'll start, start with the script. There's two kinds of scripts that I want to talk about today. And the first one I'm just going to kind of breeze through because it's less germane. Because when people think explainer videos, a lot of times they think the animated ones. That's what everybody loves right now. But there's also a, something called a process overview. And a process overview just really takes you through the process of trying to solve a problem. We were talking about, you mentioned screencasts earlier. Screencasts are a great way to do a process overview explainer. Because a process overview explainer starts with the person's problem. Um, the example that I thought of just a second ago was my friend Bill who's moonlighting at Macy's to make a few extra dollars so he can send the kids to college. But Bill has a problem at Macy's. Bill doesn't know how to use the software at work. All right, so Bill has to learn how to use the POS system at Macy's. Well, a process explainer would be a great way to do that. Because in a process explainer, what we would do is, is we'd say, hi, this is Bill. Bill works at Macy's, and Bill has a problem. He doesn't know how to use it. If you want to learn how to use the POS software, Here's what you do to ring a customer up. So I'm addressing the specific problem and I'm taking Bill through in a screencast, showing him what to click on to ring a customer out. I'm solving a specific problem. Here is the process of using the software for solving that problem. Does that make sense? 
So when you're doing screencasts, using a process overview script would be a great way to do that. The other way is problem solution. And we've watched two explainer videos that are animation. And both of those use this framework called problem solution. It is a classic storyboard, or excuse me, classic explainer video script formula. If you can do the problem solution script, you can do so much marketing with it. It doesn't just have to be explainer videos. So how does it work? It uses something called SPEC. S-P-E-C. Don't take a picture yet. Let me get the rest of it up there. <laughs> You'll get it all. Okay. A problem solution script starts off by stating the problem. What's the problem that our person has? And we provide the solution. We explain how the solution works and we finish with a call to action. So how does that look? Let's go back to our friend Bill at Macy's. Uh, we'll use the, the very cliche explainer video start. Hi, this is Bill, and Bill works at Macy's. Bill has a problem. Bill doesn't know how to count change. In the first five seconds, I've introduced the problem. Bill doesn't know how to count change. Now, there's something about the human mind and how it works. It hates and loves a mystery. I've opened a loop. It's a cognitive loop that when you open a cognitive loop by asking a question, the mind wants to answer it. You, what time is it? Oh, because you answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> we, it creates engagement. But you want to do that. Remember at the beginning when I said you have five to ten seconds to hook somebody? Right there. The problem is the hook. He has a problem. I work at Macy's and I don't know how to count change. Okay? So that's how we get that. Then we provide the solution. Bill's boss tells him he needs to go to the Change Academy. Okay? The solution is the Change Academy. So now we spend about the next 30 to 60, 30 to 60 seconds talking about, just mention, we do the solution and explaining how it works. Bill logs into the Change Academy. He goes to here and here, and the Change Academy shows him how to subtract from 100. Bill does 100 minus 78, 100 minus 50, and they explain how I go into the Change Academy and how the Change Academy works. And then, oh, Bill is so happy now because now he works at Macy's and he can count back change to customers, but no one uses cash anymore. So it doesn't work. But you know what I'm saying? This is kind of, we explain the whole process out. And at the end, we always end with a call to action. The reason you end with a call to action is the customer or the viewer has to know what to do next. If you don't tell them what happens next, they go, that was nice, it was funny. Usually the call to action would be, go to blah, 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 and slash login to sign up today, or call this number and sign up today. If you listen to any commercial, especially local TV, that when they end with a telephone number, or especially radio ads, that's what they do. They end with a call to action. All persuasion ends with a call to action. So that formula right there is a classic explainer video cartoon script. I have a problem, here's the solution, here's how the solution works, now do this. And what that does is that creates a nice little storyline in which a character faces an obstacle, overcomes the obstacle, and then becomes, you're actually, your product is the hero who helps them get the result that they want out of life. Make sense? Okay, cool. Storyboarding. I didn't used to believe, not waterboarding, storyboarding, I didn't used to believe in, because I was like, ah, I just know what I want to do. But the storyboard is really an essential element to creating anything where there's visual elements. This is a classic kind of storyboard setup. You usually have a timeline in one column, what your audio is going to have. Your audio is typically going to be your script, your special effects, and your music, instructions for what you want to have happen. The video will usually have pictures. And if you've ever, you've ever, we've ever watched behind Disney scenes or Pixar and they show the storyboards, we all know what this kind of idea is. And that's just a classic example, but you don't have to do it like that. That's just one way to do it. Um, has anyone heard of the company Videos? There's a company called Videos, V-I-D-D-Y-O-Z-E.com. They do some incredible motion graphics for intros and outros, logos and that kind of thing. This is kind of how they do it. They do a list storyboard. Here's generally how I want this to flow. So they create a flow. We're going to do an entry, then I'm going to show my first piece of footage, then I'm going to do a transition, then I'm going to show my second piece of footage, and they create a list. And after they have their list, then they say, okay, let's put some boxes around these list items. Okay, and then what we're going to say under there. And then they kind of fill that in. So that's kind of their technique. I think that's kind of an interesting way to do it if you don't like the table form. I'm not a big Excel person, so I kind of like this too. This for me, list, 
make boxes, what goes in the boxes, what am I going to say? That seems pretty straightforward. The most important thing is that everybody agrees that this is how the production is going to go. That's the important thing that you have to have about the storyboard. The storyboard becomes the central document that governs how we're going to move forward in the creative process. It's a living document. It can change, but it doesn't change unless we all agree it changes. And that's what storyboarding is all about. It's working out those differences in the script. But do storyboard your process. Write your script and then work that in with the storyboard. Voiceover. Voiceover is one of my favorite parts. Uh, just simply because I'm biased. Do the voiceover before the animation. If you want to make life horrible on a voiceover artist, tell them I've created the video, it's 30 seconds, um, you need to do a 30 second voiceover and then provide them with a 780 word script to fit in 30 seconds. It's not going to happen. And then they come back and say, can you cut out this part? Or can you re-record that? Do your voiceover part for, that just makes life so much easier. It's, it's a little bit easier to adjust the video to the voiceover, in my opinion. Match the tone with the intent. Did you catch in those explainer videos, kind of the, the tone was a friendly, upbeat tone? That's because they're wanting to create goodwill in the script. So you don't want to do a voiceover script that doesn't match. For example, we wouldn't do, does everyone remember, is it, who, is it the Humane Society or ASPCA, the Sarah McLaughlin eyes of an angel thing where the sad puppy dog eyes and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to buy this puppy, I've got to rescue them. Well, think about that, that upbeat voiceover with that commercial. Millions of puppies die every year and you can help. <laughs> it, it doesn't go. You know, there's a reason. So you just want to make sure that the, the voiceover, if you are doing something more serious, more of a PSA type of thing, make sure that you give instruction to your voiceover artist that, hey, this is a serious read, it's PSA, we need something that's, that's very dramatic and heavy. Or we want something upbeat and friendly and conversational. And finally, don't be afraid to hire it out. I know you've all... <laughs> The worst thing that a business owner can do is think that they need to be the face and voice of their business. It's, sometimes it, that is true, but if you do not have a face for video or a voice for audio, it's okay to have a professional come in and do it. I think of some of the radio commercials for like remodeling companies, that, and you get, the, you get the, and I'm sorry, that old crusty guy. <laughs> Call my company. We do great work. We come highly recommend. I don't want to call them. Gosh dang, I don't even want to hang out with that guy. You know, find, if you can't do it, it's okay. VO is actually really pretty inexpensive. So find the voice that really captures the mood and the, that you're trying to create. It's very important. So make sure that if you own the business and you don't think you can pull it off or you don't have the equipment to pull it off, don't do it. Hire it out. I'm, trust me, your customers will thank you for it and you'll be happier with the end result. And finally, um, this is one, I think Rob, you've told me this before, people will forgive bad video before they will forgive bad audio. Bad audio in a video makes you not want to watch the video. Bad video, you're like, eh, I'll tolerate it as long as I can hear what's going on. So make sure that you get your audio right. Music. I'll get on my soapbox here just really quickly on this point. Respect the intellectual property of other people. Don't steal your music. Make sure you have rights to it. I'm not an attorney. Consult your attorney before you use your music. But just make sure that you have the rights to use that music, especially if it's going out commercially. Don't steal. Choose music, just like the voiceover, choose music that reflects the tone that you want to set. Typically in an explainer video, it's going to be a happy, upbeat tone. You're wanting to create good feelings about your company and goodwill. Choose the music that reflects that. And finally, make sure that your music complements your VO. If you have chosen a voiceover artist who has a very high soprano type of voice, don't choose music that's flutes and piccolos. Right? Makes sense. I mean, there's things that audio engineers can do to compensate for that, but for the average do-it-yourself, just try to make sure that your music isn't overriding what your voiceover artist is saying or writing in the same frequency so it's hard for the listener to hear. All right, excuse me, are there sites to go to? For the, I mean, like the pictures they told us there are sites to go to. There's, for free, not so much. Um, when you're dealing with video, are you, wanting to, are you looking for free or are you looking for paid services just that are royalty free? Yes, there are. Okay. 
Fair enough. Um, audio blocks is a big one for uh, music. Audio, audio blocks. Is that B as in boy? Uh, audio A U B L O C K S, yeah. Um, you can, I, it probably wouldn't work if you were going to do something for your business. YouTube has a, a public domain library that you can use for your YouTube videos. Uh, I don't know what the commercial, if there's any commercial restrictions on those. I don't think there is. Uh, I have reference, I have a, a sheet, it's not a, but it'll be on the web, my website on Monday. I'll have all my references and resources lined up for, for that. Absolutely. But I, I want to kind of take a little bit to show you how important music is. Now this, what I've done is I've taken music that is explainer video that you typically hear in an explainer video and I've just put two pictures with it. And what I want you to do is watch this and I want you to just kind of within yourself go, what's the emotional response that I'm having based, based on this music? Is the music impacting me emotionally? Not that. Were you, animation, did, we go, did I skip it? There we go. I think I'll probably have to go back and manually start it. Feedback. Yeah. Okay, so both of them, I felt uh, happy and fun, and then when the music switched, I felt uh, a sense of groaning. Yeah. So did the music impact how you were feeling? Like when a different song came on, did it elicit kind of a different feeling? Right. That's how I felt. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. That's excellent feedback. Anyone else want to add? Yeah. I think very, for me, the very first one played more on a happy, more of a uh, happy tone, a uh, gateful, and then, then kind of went into that second tone. To me, was more of a if it was a little bit lower, would have just been more of a monotone background. To me, the second, first one was playful, upbeat, and the whole thing, like she said. Um, but the next one kind of was more of a monotone. It was just a little bit quieter in the background. It didn't, it, it didn't excite me, but it didn't make me feel sad. It was just kind of a more of a monotone mid, non-offensive, um, just very... Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. For me, the first one was kind of like, well, we're on an adventure. We're on an adventure. And then, uh, <coughs> then the second one was very nostalgic. It was like, oh, maybe this is in the past. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. When that second one comes up and that music comes on, you're like, oh, you want to, you know, you want to go run towards that little girl toddling, right? Oh, are we watching a funeral video now? <laughs> <laughs> What's the next thing going to be? Yeah. yeah. So hands over here. Anyone want to jump in? No. Yeah, go ahead. I, in both of them, I, I wanted the people to start moving <laughs> because the music was. In, in that yeah, the music. Maybe, yeah. maybe they'll eventually start moving. I don't know. It was just interesting. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Here's the interesting thing. Okay, first of all, I picked the songs before I even found the pictures. All right, I just put the music together, and then I was like, what goes up? Puppies and kids. Emotional appeal. So I'm like, okay, I'll just throw some kids in. The only things that were different in any of that, the only changes that were happening, the songs were changing, and the camera was panning and zooming. 
Okay? I wasn't trying to create any kind of an emotional appeal to any of you. I did not know what you were going to say or how this was going to impact. But I wanted to hear how the music impacted you emotionally. Because I wanted to make the point that music is emotion in an explainer video. So when you pick your music, be very cognizant of the emotion that it creates in you because it's going to affect different people differently. And it's very, it's good. I'm glad that a lot of people said it was fun, it was upbeat and adventure because that's kind of what I thought too. But if I had picked, can you imagine now we go back to that one with the dogs in the crates and their broken windows and children and the sad music with that? How much does the story change? You become, it's much different. I probably should have done that for this. But do you see the impact and why the choice of music is so important? Finally, animation. And I left animation last for a reason. Because there are a million different websites out there that will teach you how to do explainer video da damnation. <laughs> Maybe you'll say that when you're halfway through. Animation. And that's not what this is about. What people really don't talk about is how do you, what is the process that you need to go through to have this happen? And that's what I really wanted today to be about, not to teach you how to move things on a screen and how to create motion with a piece of software. There's millions of sites that will help teach you that. If you want to do this on your own, why I put this up, this is a company called Raw Shorts and they have everything from a zero, start for free, to $59. For zero dollars, you'll probably be able to, to go in there and play with it. You won't be able to publish anything, but you'll get an idea for how it works. The interface is kind of a mashup between Camtasia and, and PowerPoint. You've got your scenes over here. You've got your timeline slider with your main work desktop area and your elements over on the right. You just move things around, drop them in, and it does a lot of the work for you. They have a template system. It's not difficult, but it does take some effort to learn. It's a piece of software, so you are going to have to learn. Maybe there's an explainer video that shows you how to do it. Uh, another one, Powtoon, very popular uh, entry-level program. Uh, again, zero to $99 a month. Powtoon is a little bit different. It'll do corporate animations, uh, social media. It will do presentations, infographics, and explainer videos. Again, what I would recommend that if you just want to play with these, start with the free program. Go in there and play around. Even things like uh, Go Animate, Video Scribe, they have free trials. I would just say they're limited trials, so if you want to learn it, commit to that whole trial time of really getting to know that software to decide if you, you want to learn it. Um, same, similar setup, slides on the left, work area, elements on the right, all pretty much the same. Animation, the animation piece of this, is it's, uh, especially when you're dealing with pre-made systems, it's, it's half art, half guess, but they've, they've actually done a lot of the hard work for you. Um, if you're going to do it yourself, this is probably the route I would go as a, as a site like this. Here's some of these resources. I'll go ahead and put those up there for you. And we can't forget these. Camtasia, ScreenFlow, and Captivate. Those are all screen capture programs. Love Camtasia. ScreenFlow is also great. I have not worked with Cap Captivate. PowerPoint and Prezi, does anyone know, and maybe you do realize how great PowerPoint is for creating uh, motion and animation? It's really getting a lot better. They are really improving the product. Uh, so it's, if you have PowerPoint, go ahead and use it. Camtasia can be yes. installed, it, it appears as a toolbar on PowerPoint. Yes. So you can integrate PowerPoint and Camtasia. And Camtasia, yeah, you are right. And Camtasia also does have some of the animations in that in Camtasia 9. So yes, that is the, the Buzz plugin to PowerPoint. You're right. Oh, sure. Animation software, there we go. Let me know when you've got it. Good, got it? Okay, good. Get it? Got it, good. Okay, so let's, should you do it yourself or should you hire it out? Anyone, I'll defer to my expert. Anyone care to guess what it costs to have an explainer video made, a two minute explainer video? Any guesses? $3,000, $350. $350, 3000 Well, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it depends. I've had, I've had one made for 250 bucks. But it was a pow tune and a voiceover by somebody else. And it, it was powerful. 
So it worked but, out well for you? Powtoon had an excellent start right off the bat. But, and then Jib Jab, you can, I've done some stuff with Jib Jab. They have, you can do it once a year for free for your Christmas. And oh, yes. You put those little faces on the characters. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Anyways. I, okay, so, so two, you've done 250? You've done 250, and now we've heard, heard 3,000. I've seen it. Yeah, two, any 250 tends to be kind of on the on the bottom end. 20,000 is not unheard of for a big brand. This depends if you want to take this on yourself or if you want to find someone to do it. So some things to consider if you're going to do it yourself. Cost definitely is going to cost you less if you do it yourself, and you have total control over the project. You pick all of the elements. You decide on the script. You decide on the voiceover and the uh, music and the animation. On the downside of that, it's going to take you some time, it's going to take a lot of effort, and you're going to have to develop some skills. Now, those sites, the do-it-yourself sites, do make it a lot easier. You don't have to do so much. It's not like it used to be. But if you do it yourself, you're going to have a, a few obstacles to overcome. Now, should you hire it out? Maybe. Downside on that, or the positives on that, excuse me, you're going to get great quality because you're going to be dealing with a company that does this. That's their product. And you're going to get originality. They aren't limited by templates that you, do on the, that you have on the do-it-yourself sites. You have more originality. They can customize it to what you want. On the downside, the biggest downside to hiring it out and hiring an explainer video company to make one for you is the cost. But here's what I want to encourage you, and especially I, there's a few business owners and I know you'll appreciate that. What is the return on the investment of the video? If your, if your adoption rates, if you are capturing customers and creating customers from that, and you can show the analytics that say that, yes, we spent $5,000 on this, but we can prove that the customers coming into our funnel who have eventually purchased have created $40,000 more for us, how expensive was that explainer video? It's free. You made a lot of money from uh, having someone make a cartoon for you. So don't let price be necessarily the determining factor. Factor. Make sure you're looking at the return on what you're paying for what you're getting. Creative control. If you're hiring a company out, they're going to have their opinions on things, and you may not get everything you want. If you're a little bit of a control freak, that may be an issue for you. I'm sorry, micromanager. That may be a little bit of a, an issue for you. And involvement. You're still going to have to be involved. You can't just say, here you go, I'm out. You're going to need to be involved in the process if you're going to get what you want. So that's some things to consider. I'm about up, out of time, so let's uh, have a couple minutes of questions. We've got about five minutes worth of questions. If you guys have anything, more than happy to answer anything for you. Yeah. You talk a little bit about integrating videos once they're produced into a WordPress site. For instance, I've toyed around with just making a YouTube video mm -hmm. and then dropping it into video. Is there a better way to get a <coughs> video integrated into a WordPress? I, it really depends on the amount of controls that you want to have. I love YouTube as a way of doing that because your video lives not only uh, in line in your site, but you also have the SEO value and the largest video search engine in the world, largest search engine in the world, YouTube to work with. But sometimes you want to control the content. You don't want everyone to see it. Maybe it's a membership area. Maybe Vimeo or some kind of private hosting is a better solution for you. Um, but for me, it's just embedding the video is probably the best way that I've come to do it. Does anyone else have a different opinion? Anyone who's like really good at this kind of stuff for SEO and that kind of thing? Okay. Other questions? Is Red Logic your company? No. So you click on your on the link on the WCKC site and it goes to redlogic.com. Is that right? Oh my gosh. Uh, no, it is not my company. The site says your session is with Rob Walsh. It's, Rob is right after me. Oh. Okay. This is this is the session where we answer questions about about the agenda for today. <laughs> Bad links. This is the problem. This is customer service for WordPress Kansas City. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. That's fine to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. So my question is, when you talk about uh, justifying the amount of money that you put towards the explainer video, you mm -hmm. spent five thousand dollars to. If we're not selling a product and it's a service, that kind of thing, is it something that you're kind of doing an A, B test in regards to sites to say, somebody watches this video, once they click that, they're going to go into a different landing page so you can see like the convert on the WordPress site, are you looking at 
how are you being able to track other than Google Analytics says that yes, they visited and they saw this video. Just because they saw the video, it doesn't mean that they took 100% action. Oh, you're talking about the, the trail for the, the funnel? Yeah, the trail itself to figure not, out. This, okay, I'll be honest, that's not really my area of expertise, but yes, that's ex pretty much what you would have to do is just the, the the analytics software would have to kind of tell you where your customer starts in your funnel and then how far they're going. Uh, are they abandoning it? Are they watching all of the video on the next page? And how far each step they're going through in the process so they're going deeper into the buying, the purchasing funnel. And so. then second question is if... Um, How hard is it to after you produce the majority of? I mean, you pr produce one of those contents, but you want to change it up for like a different service. But the majority of the beginning is going to be the same. Um, obviously, in sending it to the same company, are you doing yourself the last part of the animation to change that last little bit for a different service? It's or pretty something? easy it's to change. Easier. Like, how hard is it for a voiceover person to change that, tailor that? Is it just is it going to be the same? Cost it's it's continues? typically in that in that length. Like if I'm doing a VO, I can go in and re-record the whole thing, record a new one uh -huh. faster than I can go in and try to get my voice to sound exactly like it did at that day, at that time. Just and to do the whole new to, thing. Yeah, it's okay. much easier just to record a, a, new, via, a new voiceover for it. Yeah. Um, I've done a couple of uh, home-cooked uh, explainer videos myself. Um, and the, the voiceover stuff is the thing I think I want to struggle with. Um, what, where, where do I go to find good voiceover? Especially, I've, I've worked with a, with a business for women, so I buy women's voices. And uh, what's, what's the price range that, that one would expect? Okay, it depends on what you want to do and what you're looking for. Um, gosh, I hate saying this, but uh, you can get a pretty good result off of Fiverr. Fiverr is actually becoming a much better freelance site. Here's my good thing. Anytime you're shopping for voiceover so artists, and this is, I think, is the thing that you that is best. Have a portion of your script. Have them record it for you. Give them a portion of the script and ask as part of the bid. I want you to record part of this so I can hear what you sound like. And that's going to work out a lot of things. Number one, it's going to tell you do they know how to do the read. Number two, it's going to give you maybe an interpretation of the script that you didn't think of. And number three, it's going to tell you how good the quality of your equipment is. Because there's a lot of people out there who are just recording into their iPhone and calling, hey, I'm a voiceover artist and here's my, oh, hold on, I got a call. I'll give you the rest of this in a minute. So, you know, ask for a sample. And it, if you're, if, believe me, if you're a freelancer looking for work, especially if you're talking Fiverr up work, you're not going to have a problem saying, you know what, yeah, sure, I'll give you a 30-second demo uh, along with my bid. That would probably be how I would handle it. What was the source Which, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. It's going to be hit and miss, though. Uh, it's, it's becoming a much better freelance site. They're, um, they've changed it. it is, everything isn't just $5 anymore. <laughs> are, are there any other sites that you recommend? Yeah. Fiverr and Upwork are two of the big ones. Um, some of them, like, uh, I don't think Raw Shorts is doing it anymore, but Raw Shorts used to have a marketplace that. There's, there's voices.com and voice123. Here's, yeah, you're going to, a couple of things. Number one, if you're doing a small project, they're going to be, you're going to get great quality, probably going to get much, much better quality. You're also going to pay a lot more for it, probably. Um, and I, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any resources for screencasts? Screencast, Camtasia, I love for, uh, yeah, just doing that and, and even your own mic. Camtasia is a great one to do, use on your own. This isn't really for websites, but. Um, what I find with my clients a lot of times is I do technical stuff. So if I want to explain something, you know, it's like, how do you do this? It's like 10 steps or five steps. It's so much easier to just turn on a screencast or screen capture, talk over it, and do one take. You're not going to publish it anywhere. But every Absolutely. time it solves the problem Absolutely. in 30 seconds, and it would take me longer. Why? Dual channel hypothesis right there. Okay, I am out of time. Uh, I, I will be more than happy to stay afterwards. Thank you all. You have been a wonderful group. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.